Hi cuties, my name is Hanako Kozumi and this is the channel Nerdy Nekoma. Everything here is about Haiku Chat stories and fanfic. Thanks for joining us today. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and leaving a like. And with that, welcome to today's video. This is the fourth and final part of Pretend to Get Beat Up and today's protagonist is Sugawara. Again, I'm very sorry. This ship is Daisuga Iwaoi. I hope you will like it. Little content warning for serious injuries. And now, let's start with the video. Enjoy. Suga had been excited all day to go home. Not that he didn't enjoy the time he spent with Hinata and Kenma, but he missed his bar friends. Their jobs had been really busy lately, and he was worried. Oikawa had a tendency to overwork himself. Iwaizumi did the same when he was stressed, and Daichi just got the okay from his doctor, but they already gave him a ton of work. He sighed. He had been excited to go home, but now he was just sitting here in his car, in front of their house. The whole way back he drove slower than usual, but time still passed way too fast. Suga knew he had to go inside soon or they would get really worried. The longer he waited, the worse it would get. A few tears fell from his eyes and he quickly wiped them away. Quiet sniffles escaped his throat. Today was just overwhelming. Who would have thought it would end like this? The pain in his side and jaw had turned into a consistent throbbing and the taste of blood still lingered on his tongue. Pull yourself together. It is just a prank. He repeated that mantra as he slowly made his way out of the car and opened the front door. Koshi, finally, you took for... Oikawa stopped dead in his tracks, his eyes widening. Suga placed his shoes and back to the side, almost as if he wasn't aware of the bruises clearly visible on his jaw and neck. Who did this to you? Oikawa's expression turned dark and his voice was suspiciously calm. Toru, I... Who did it? He was trembling with suppressed rage and his hands clenched into fists. Tears of anger gathered in his eyes as he scanned the injuries over and over again. Toru? Koshi? What is going on? The concern was evident in his voice as Iwaizumi followed Aikawa to the hallway and froze, just like him, upon seeing Sugawara. The silver-haired didn't manage to look up from the ground, too afraid of what he would find. He didn't need to look up to know how Iwa would react. The former ace was just as angry as Aikawa, but other than him, the concern for his boyfriend didn't feel the desire for vengeance but grounded him. Go. Cool. He took a deep breath. Come inside first. I'll get the first aid kit and then we can cuddle and drink tea if you like. How does that sound? His voice was strained. He wanted to protect him. And if he couldn't do that before, he would now. Iwaizumi would make sure that all his needs were met and that his injuries were cared for. What are you saying? We need to do something. We need to... Toru, I get it. But first... He pointed at Sugawara. Oikawa's anger flared up at the side before slowly subsiding as he understood what Iwa meant. 
The tears decorating Suga's cheeks broke his heart and made him want to destroy the reason for his sorrow, but for now, caring for him was the highest priority. I'm sorry, Suga. Here, I... Don't be. His voice was meek and strained. The silver head failed to stop his body from shaking. He was afraid of the reaction his next words would invoke. He took a deep breath, which sent a burning sensation through his ribs and side. But he bit his tongue to give nothing away. It's a prank. What? I'm truly sorry. I shouldn't have. He could hear Iwazumi's chuckle. It was bitter, almost cold. I pretended not to wake up and Toto actually doesn't wake up after his prank failed. I guess it's only fair for you to get your revenge. Congrats! You really had me worried sick and ready to kill someone. I hope you're happy. The words sent shivers down his spine. Suga wasn't sure he had seen Iwa ever this angry. The trainer dismissively waved his hands and left. They could hear the door to his office shut close, with more force than necessary. Both, Suga and Aikawa flinched at the sudden noise. When the taller setter turned around, a variety of emotions was displayed on his face, but in the end, he seemed to settle for guilt. This is my fault, isn't it? I started all of this. I thought it would be fun. Part of it was. He glared at him. Maybe, but this is not. I know that I went to... I just... I thought you were smarter than me. I feel awful about everything that happened. Not a day passes without me regretting everything. And I know I don't have the right to be angry with you, but I am. I worked so hard on making amends for every fucking thing I messed up and here you are. Iwazumi's prank was bad enough, but at least he ended it quickly. At least I didn't look at him and thought he got traumatized because some random stranger assaulted him. This isn't funny. I know. I'm sorry. He almost choked on the words. One, I'm sorry it won't fix this. Especially not with Iwa. Looks like we both need to make amends now. He let out a sigh of resignation before leaving, not sparing him another glance. Suga was on the verge of breaking down. He destroyed his chances of just cuddling with them while recovering. The moment he saw the horror in their eyes and the wrath accompanied by paralyzing helplessness, he wanted it to be a prank, to be all fake. And after the words were spoken, he couldn't take them back. In all honesty, he wasn't sure which was worse. But he hoped they could work through this. And maybe, just maybe, they never needed to know. There was no reason to be scared. He was safe. Safe. He didn't feel safe while sleeping alone in the living room. The dark shadows seemed to close in on him, and whenever he closed his eyes, the guy returned, making his heart race. He felt alone, even though his boyfriends were just a few meters away from him upstairs. Daichi offered to stay with him, but Suga practically backed him to go with the others. God knows Daichi, who was still recovering and did absolutely nothing wrong, deserved to sleep in a comfortable bed. Suga could see that the younger was angry at him as well, but he tried to de-escalate the situation. It had always been like this. Daichi was such a kind soul, which made him perfect for the work of a police officer. Suga denied any of his attempts to approach him or offer hugs and cuddles. 
He didn't mean to show him the cold shoulder, but it was part of his job to recognize injuries and he was afraid that Daichi would notice his act. It took hours for the former setter to fall into a restless sleep. The next day was no different. Iwaizumi spent most of his time working, Oikawa was out practicing and Suga tried to hide away from them as much as possible. The wounds seemed more serious than he first assumed. The pain had quickly turned into a consistent presence in his mind and Suga just tried his best to ignore it and not move too much. At some point in the early evening, he just decided to drag himself into bed. He felt incredibly tired. Tomorrow, things would get better. He was certain of it. Do you think he's alright? Oikawa gently brushed through Suga's hair with his fingers. When he came home, Suga was already in bed. He didn't wake up when Iwa called for dinner and none of them wanted to disturb him if he was really this tired. He looks exhausted. Must be exhausting getting all three of your boyfriends mad at the same time. Iwaizumi grumbled, but Oikawa could see the love in his eyes as he looked at Sugawara's sleeping figure. He sighed. Yeah, at least it was for me. Choru, we are not mad at you. I for my part never was. Sure, the prank you planned was stupid, but your injury was an accident. But I started all of this. If it wasn't for me, Suga wouldn't have done this, and we would still be alright. Iwaizumi's eyes widened a little. Hey, but we are alright. Things are not always easy, but we are going to be alright. This is nothing we can't overcome. Sorry. He sniffled. I'm just being silly again. Toru, your feelings aren't silly. I'm just so fucking afraid that you're going to leave, that we break up, and all because of me. Daichi hugged him tightly. We would never leave, love. I cannot speak for the others, but I want to spend my life with you. All of it. Please don't worry about me leaving. It's not going to happen. Thank you. He returned the hug. I hope you know that I'll stay too. I spent way too much time enduring your antics to get fed up with them now. Oikawa chuckled. <laughs> So mean, Iwa-chan. Iwaizumi laughed and playfully ruffled his hair, which the Seda commented with a whine. I love you, Toru. Me too. I love you too. They cuddled, taking Suga in the midst. Everything is going to be fine. Yeah. Iwaizumi yawned while answering the phone. Dude, it's like 1pm, don't tell me you've been sleeping till now. Kuro, I haven't heard from you in a while, I'm already missing it. Mean. Don't criticize my sleep schedule and we're fine. Besides, these last days have been really exhausting. I can imagine. It is actually why I called. Iwaizumi frowned confused while walking into the kitchen, where he was greeted by Daichi's kind smile and Oikawa's tired groan. Because of my exhausting days? He sounded skeptical. Iwa's frown deepened when he couldn't spot Suga anywhere as expected. Yeah, well... Kind of. 
I wanted to ask how Suga has been holding up. Suga, why? The other two looked at him surprised, all tiredness slowly vanishing. You know, because of that thing that happened two days ago? When he was out with Hinata and Kenma? Yeah. His voice sounded weirdly strained. I was, um, still pretty worried about him, but Kemma is doing fine so far. How about Suga? He is fine. Why shouldn't he be? He was getting annoyed. What was that stupid rooster talking about? Oikawa frowned as well. Well, because he got beat up? Kemma said he was the worst of- Why are you so calm about this? Oh, you mean the prank? The line fell silent. Kuro? You were- It wasn't a prank. Okay, first of all, don't call me that. And second, yes it was, he told us. The trainer was getting agitated and subconsciously clenched his jaw. No, it wasn't. But he... He lied. So did Kenma. Iwazumi froze. Something stupid about not wanting us to worry about them. He could practically hear Kuro grinding his teeth at the other end of the line. That can't be. It is. Kuro sighed. Please, just check on him. Kemma has a slight concussion and some bruises. He was lucky that it was nothing worse. Make sure the same goes for Suga. He hung up and Iwazumi stared at the phone in disbelief. What did he say? What happened? Kenma got beat up. The prank? No. Aikawa looked up confused. Fuck. Iwazumi turned around quickly and stormed towards the bedroom. Hajime, wait! What happened? I'm gonna find out. The other two followed quickly. As soon as Iwazumi entered the room, he rushed to Suga's side. As gently as he could, he shook him awake, but he was on edge. His boyfriend was injured and he didn't even know. Hajime, what happened? Is someone hurt? He rushed to get up when he saw the fear in the taller's eyes, but immediately regretted it when a sharp pain shot through his nerves. Suga didn't manage to suppress the pain cry escaping his throat, and part of him registered the effect it had on his beloved. So it's true. What? No! Why didn't you tell us? He carefully guided the setter to lay back down. I'm sorry. I didn't mean for things to turn out this way. I'm sorry. Kochan? Why? Tears glistened in his eyes. I can live with you being angry at me, but I can't bear to hurt you. Keeping it to yourself is no solution. You told me that. Sugawara smiled sadly. I know, I'm sorry. I guess I'm a hypocrite after all. Asuga. Daichi. The other looked at him with warm puppy eyes. Where does it hurt? Jaw inside. Iwazumi gently inspected his jaw until the other suddenly hissed. Surprised he leaned closer, but found close to nothing. 
Suga noticed his confused look. Makeup. True to his words, sticking to his fingers was a creamy substance the color of Suga's skin. Could one of you get something to remove this? And I'll get some ice. We need to see how serious this is. Oikawa immediately jumped up and ran to the bathroom. Iwizumi made his way downstairs while Daichi took place beside the other and gently held his hand. So, that's it? You didn't want to worry us? Essentially, yes. And I also didn't want to wait for all of you to come home while you chase down our two chaotic boyfriends trying to find a strange man in an empty mall to murder him. Daichi couldn't help but laugh. Good point. Still, please never keep such a thing from us ever again, okay? What if you had been hurt more seriously? I love you way too much to risk that. Daichi... I got the eyes. When both of them returned, they made it their personal goal to tend to each injury the best anyone ever could, leaving kisses on his skin the whole way, kissing it better. John and I got done. Was that all? He looked at Suga pleadingly as if saying, please let it be all. And the silver-haired was honestly tempted to say yes, but after these past days, he knew better. He sighed and shook his head. No. You mentioned your side, right? He nodded. Which one? Left. His voice got meek as he was slowly lifted his shirt. All three of them gasped as he revealed the huge bruise on his ribcage. He kicked me a bit. The others tensed. We'll need more ice, some painkillers, and you. He looked at Suga. Are not allowed to get up. Fine with me. You sure we shouldn't bring him to a hospital? Iwazumi forced the words out between his teeth. Haji, I'm going to be fine. I just need you guys. He carefully placed a hand on Iwazumi's cheek and tried massaging the tension away a bit by caressing the skin softly. You sure? I am. He didn't look convinced. Koshi, this is serious. What if you broke a rib? We couldn't do much about that besides cooling and resting anyway. What if you are bleeding internally? What if... Toru, darling, I'm fine. I just need to rest. He sighed. All right. And... And? Oikawa's head perked up immediately. I need someone to cuddle. In the blink of an eye, the tall had climbed into bed beside him and wrapped him in his arms as gently as possible. Suga snuggled closer to his chest and slowly but surely, the dam broke and he cried. He cried so much. He didn't even realize how much he needed this. Oh, Koshi. Daichi and I are going to get some snacks and painkillers. If you like, you two can choose a movie to watch. Okay. Iwa? Yes? 
I'm sorry. Don't be, baby. This is not your fault. He gently placed a kiss on Suga's forehead before leaving Daichi in tow. So. So. Are you going to arrest him? Daichi stacked some snacks on the kitchen counter, seemingly very invested in the task. I'm not going to force Suga to file charges. Iwazumi wanted to protest. But don't think that means he will get away with this. I'll gather everything I can and he will pay for hurting Suga. Iwazumi smiled grimly. Don't get too obsessed with it, but good, he deserves it. He turned around. Oh, and also, you look pretty hot when you're all railed up. Maybe I should make you angry on purpose sometime. He winked at him and caught a short glimpse of his quickly reddening face before leaving. Thanks for watching till the end. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you can forgive me for doing this to Sugawara and Kenma and Hinata. So yeah, this was the final part. But as you see, there is potential for the story to go on. I have a few ideas in mind. Um, so yeah, it doesn't end here. And I hope you liked it. If you liked it, consider leaving a like. And if you want to see more, consider subscribing. And I hope to see you very soon. If you have any requests, put them under the community posts. And now have a wonderful day. Looks like we really are cursed. Aikawa hacked him tighter, as if he tried to protect him from the rest of the world. If we are, we'll do everything to protect Hajime. Suga nodded firmly. They wouldn't let anything happen to Iwazumi. They would protect him. <laughs>